Greetings folks, this is the Asus G14. And in a previous video, I had talked about this laptop. Would I daily drive it? Absolutely. But did I find the price to value worth anything? The form factor? Who was looking for that? Apparently, all of you. Apparently, all of you were looking for this form factor and had found everything that this machine delivered for the most part perfect for you. So, I listened to the community. I had to put my money where my mouth is, I bought this laptop for review from Best Buy. So with that said, let's see if this three and a half pound little Asus laptop has got what it takes to be cool enough for you. This is my in-depth review of the Asus G14. Inside this G14 is the Ryzen 4900 HS CPU, the RTX 2060 Max-Q, 16 gigabytes of dual channel 3200 megahertz memory, but eight gigabytes of this is soldered to the motherboard. We have a single terabyte NVMe and the AX200 Wi-Fi 6 is located underneath the storage. Buyer beware with the soldered memory and a single storage solution. Be sure to spend wisely so you're not wasting money replacing some of these components later. One of the best features of this tiny laptop is the 76 watt hour battery. Seven hours battery life wasn't an issue and I was able to get through my days with ease. Now thanks to the lower power requirements of this Ryzen CPU, video editing on the go was efficient and powerful. Thank you Ryzen. Opening the laptop with one hand is easy, despite the magnetic grip that keeps the lid closed. The lid design will prop the laptop up for improved keyboard ergonomics and airflow. Due to this design, Asus has issued a BIOS update that will reduce the CPU wattage by 10 watts when the G14 is in clamshell mode while retaining the maximum GPU performance. This applies to CPU-only tasks such as Cinebench and combined CPU-GPU testing such as Cinebench and Heaven GPU stress testing. This of course carries over to gaming too. Good update Asus since this will reduce the chances of overheating. The display I have a love-hate relationship with. It's 120 Hz, Full HD, IPS type, Pantone validated panel that comes in at 97% standard RGB, 324 nits, and uses FreeSync. I love all of this. However, the display's response time of 40 milliseconds is not ideal for fast-paced games. Now, if this is your first gaming laptop or gaming laptop with a high refresh rate, perhaps you'll not notice this. But those coming from their previous high refresh rate gaming laptop with a typical 9 milliseconds or faster response time, they'll likely notice this immediately, even in the desktop. The trained eye can be a blessing and a curse. Powering the G14 is a physically small in size, 180 watt power supply unit that plugs into the left side of the laptop. Next to this is an HDMI, a USB-C that'll accept power delivery, hallelujah, and output display port, followed by a combo, headphone, and mic port. The right side has a USB-C for data, two USB 3 ports, and a lock. Not a lot of ports, but not a lot of laptop either. Usability of our Pocket Hercules offers Windows Hello fingerprint recognition built into the power button. I prefer this fingerprint method, but accuracy can be sketchy, if you're not lined up just right. The glass Windows Precision touchpad is top notch, as is the keyboard itself. It's easy to use and gives us 1.7 millimeters of key travel. However, the white LED backlighting uniformity is the worst I have ever seen. This is not limited to my machine either. The quad speakers make up for this along with the function keys above for volume up, down, mic mute, and quick access to your Armory Crate software. Using the G14's built-in microphone, we are going to showcase the most important thing that every G14 owner should embrace. Without this, I cannot guarantee the longevity of your laptop whatsoever, as these performance and power profiles do nothing but create an obnoxious amount of heat in your system. The keyboard deck is very hot to the touch, and I would not be able to recommend this laptop if it weren't for what I'm about to show you. Go to the Registry Editor. This could get a little tricky, but just try to follow me here. 
H key, local machine. All right, we want to start right here. We want to go to system. We want to go to current control set, then to control. After that, we are looking for power. After that, power settings. Now, we are looking for the numbers 5453325. Here we are. Now we are looking for a lowercase b, lowercase e, 337238. We're going to click on that once. We're going to go to attributes, right click on this, modify, set value data from the factory one to the number two, hit OK. We're going to close this out and then we're going to go to our search box again and we want to edit the power plan. Change the advanced power settings and then from here go down to processor power management. Now without doing everything that we just did, make that value data go from a number one to a number two, this option would not exist. Processor performance boost mode. That's right, we are going to disable turbo on the 4900HS. You can do this on all Ryzen mobile CPUs. And now we will get the base clock frequency of three gigahertz. The performance here is spectacular, still pretty much smashes most Intel mobile chips. And the thermals, we're gonna drop 20, maybe 25 degrees. Maybe I might even say it, 30 degrees Celsius at times. Are you ready? Grab your popcorn, let's do this. Performance mode will easily push the CPU to 100 degrees Celsius at 46 decibels. This is the best mode out of the box to use. Turbo mode bumps the wattage up a little bit on the CPU and will easily hit 105 degrees Celsius. Manual mode with maximum fans drops the temps a bit, but does so at the expense of loud fan acoustics. Here's my recommendation, disabling turbo boost per the modification that we just revealed a minute ago. We get amazing thermal performance and lovely fan acoustics. And for you savage thermal fiends that demand chilly hardware can disable turbo on manual profile, then set your fans to maximum. When it comes to price to performance, the 65 watt 2060 Max-Q featured in this G14 at the top of the screen falls behind a 1660 Ti at 80 watts. You can get the 90 watt variants of this too. Below that is a 115 watt 1660 Ti featured in the Mag15 that can be had for the same price as the G14, maybe less. 80 watt 2060 matches the 115 watt 1660 Ti and most recently released 2060 laptops will have a 90 watt part. The 2060 at 115 watts featured in a few laptops I've covered over the last 12 months decimate all of the above, including every single 2070 Max-Q at 90 watts. All of the performance shown here can be had for less than this G14, so just a heads up should that be your main concern. Wattage is fixed. This is not something we can modify on our own. Here's Cinebench R20 in turbo mode. Cinebench R20 on battery, which is amazing. Go Ryzen. Cinebench R20 with our 3 gigahertz profile. Here's 3 gigahertz on battery. Time Spy in turbo mode. Fire Strike in turbo mode. Fire Strike with our 3 gigahertz profile, which will default to base GPU clock speeds that you can bring back up should you desire that 2-3% in-game FPS bump. Look, I'm going to be honest with you, I turned on the laptop, started up Call of Duty Modern Warfare, played a little Piccadilly Online, and I'm hitting 100 degrees Celsius. This is, this is less than 10, maybe 15 minutes of the laptop being turned on, okay? This is ridiculous. I could barely finish a game throughout the whole course of using this laptop under any of the performance or turbo profiles it was it was alarming how hot it was it's just not something i'm used to seeing now on the other hand we go ahead and go through that tutorial disable the uh, turbo boost right i mean now we're starting to get some pretty good thermal performance now in this clip here i played this game for an irresponsible amount of time all right the laptop was no longer hot to the touch, or at least not like it was. Fan acoustics, much better. Thermal performance blows the doors off of most laptops. I'm not going to win Father of the Year award, okay? 
Look, I played this game for way too many hours today, but I punished the tar out of this laptop and I felt comfortable doing it. Meanwhile, the CPU never hit 80 degrees Celsius. Do you see what I'm saying here? DPC latency tests for real-time audio have been the best tested yet on Bop of All Trades. The speaker audio itself features quad speakers, two on the keyboard deck, and two on the bottom of the laptop. The G14 speaker quality is among the best Windows-based laptops that I have heard yet. So my final thoughts on the Asus G14. Look no further if you need that form factor, and I think a lot of you do based on the comment section that I have been reading up on. It's about the same size as my wife's 2015 MacBook Air, and it's a little bit smaller than what you would find with a 15-inch razor blade or a Mag 15. It's definitely lighter as well at three and a half pounds. But if we were not able to cure the thermal performance out of this machine, then I would have easily been able to just overlook everything else that this laptop does great because the speaker audio is magnificent. Trackpad worked very well. Keyboard, I loved it, uh, but the uniformity of the white LED backlighting, not a fan. So hopefully that can get fixed ASAP. Three and a half pounds. Who doesn't like a light laptop unless it twists and bends? And this one doesn't. Very rigid thanks to the magnesium type build. And... Uh, Overall, this is a nice 14-inch gaming laptop, and I think after the BIOS update that Asus released with the lid being closed, we can keep thermal performance down with that tweak that I'd showcased in this video, and now we can embrace everything else that this laptop does great, making it much easier to recommend. But if it wasn't for that, and if you are not willing to take the time to make that tweak, then best of luck to you because this has been the hottest laptop that I have showcased on the channel, not just for CPU temperatures, but the actual heat, the feel to the touch. This thing was nasty warm, but take 90 seconds, apply a fix, and now it becomes kind of one of the best laptops out there on the market, <laughs> all in 14 inches. Who knew? All right, folks, that's going to do it. I'm Bob of all trades. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.